We did it because we loved the music. You mentioned uh, keeping the humanity of it, but back in the 80s, people uh, thought of uh, synthesizers as, as something that wasn't, uh, wasn't real music. I yeah, they did. They did, but I th and, I, and I think as well, in the early 90s, music went very much back to guitar-based, um, grunge-type music, and the synthesizer went out of fashion again there. And, and now we're in the 2000s. It, I think what's happened now is that it has been accepted as a real instrument, and it is just as important as a guitar, a guitar, or a violin, or a trumpet, and I think I think it just people took a lot a long time to accept it. I think is what happened. Yeah, you uh, you said two years ago you started working on this new album. Can you remember what that spark was that you wanted to be creative again and create something new? Part of the spark, people kept asking me to sing yeah. on their records, and I don't think of myself as a singer. I said I, I felt a little tiny bit resentful that that. I'm, that you know, I've, I've wrote, not on my own, but with some of the people, I've written some, some songs that have done quite well around the world. And that, that's what I think of myself. I think there was another thing. I saw a documentary about Herbie Hancock, who was a much, much better musician <laughs> than me, but he had an hour and a half documentary on the TV in Britain, <laughs> even though he's, he's American. And I thought, well, they could, you know, they could do a 15 minute documentary <laughs> on me. Am, am, I, am I getting forgotten? And, and it, it was partly, the, I just want to say, we, we can do some stuff. It was, it was like saying, hello, we are still there. Or yeah, yeah. Why was it important to, to make that statement that you're still here? Well, I, I think we're creative. Uh, yeah. And, and it's, it's an overused phrase, but, but we have to do things somehow. We've done it for our whole lives. You just came out of school, didn't you? Yeah. And yes. started it. We, we don't feel fulfilled unless we're making something. It's really strange. Um, when you just uh, when you were just all just starting with the Human League, w was there much faith in that it would end up yeah like this? Maybe? No, well, I doubt that anybody. Re I think anybody who who is serious about what you do, you just hope you hope that it's going to do well. But you you would never be blasé enough to to expect it. You just sort of hope, you know. It's why kids get together in the bedrooms, isn't it? And, you know, strum a few chords, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not that we do anything like that, but, but you know, you just... We, we did it because we loved the music. And it, nowadays, it's such a different culture nowadays. I, I don't really know what it's like in Holland, but in the UK, everybody wants to be famous. They don't really care what they're famous for. They can be famous for taking their clothes off or for going out with somebody else who's famous, but they just want to be famous. And I don't think that's, what, that's not why we did it. We did it because we loved the music. Everything else that came with, well, we, I mean, we actively sort of shy away from the fame side of it because we're not really that interested. But I think it's a, such a different culture now. People expect to be famous for anything. It's, it's, a, it's the celebrity thing. And I don't think any of us think of ourselves as celebrities. We wanted to make new things, didn't mm -hmm. we? It's, it's funny that now we liked Roxy Music and David Bowie, but we wanted to make our stuff to move it on. Mm. And, and certainly in Britain now, people are very happy to go on TV and sing a song by, by Robbie Williams that Robbie Williams has already done it very, very well. Mm. It doesn't need doing again, do something new, and you get paid more. Yeah.